with 282 different mammal species and 925 bird species. This wealth makes Thailand a hotbed of biodiversity. Central Thailand is a natural, self-contained basin, often termed the rice bowl of Asia. Carved and nourished by four rivers that flow south from the northern hills before merging into the sea. It is a flat and fertile floodplain. The most conspicuous features of the country's terrain are the dramatic cliff-ridden mountains. They cover most of the northern country and extend along the Myanmar border on the west. In this hostile environment of rugged, rocky terrain, the cool temperature encourages the growth of flowers and ferns. Thailand is home to 10% of the world's flowering plants, with more than 27,000 different species, some of which survive and bloom in this harsh landscape. Their names read like poetry, parrot flower. Water lily, Chinese rose, but as poetic and beautiful as the flowers may be, they need help to survive. Birds, along with butterflies, bees and other insects, play an important role in helping flowers to reproduce. The birds search for food, shelter, and nesting material. In turn, they carry the pollen from one flower to another, helping to pollinate the plants. The rainforest is full of life, noisy life. Each morning upon awakening, the Gibbon family announces its presence using their territorial hooting call that can be heard several kilometers away. The call warns intruding gibbons and other animals to stay out of their territory. Although gibbons are the smallest of the ape species, member of the primates, cousin to the gorilla, chimpanzee, orangutan, and ourselves, they are kings and queens of the forest canopy. Gibbons are omnivorous, eating a variety of foods. They forage during the day, eating figs, a variety of fruits, leaves, and flowers. But the white-handed gibbon is particularly fructiferous, and its presence in a forest is a good indication of a plentiful supply of fruiting trees. In a forest glade, another mammal is looking for food, the black bear. The gibbons are curious and attentive, not too cautious. To be on the safe side, the brownish-furred female seeks comfort with her chosen black-furred male. 
the black bear will climb to rest, sleep, eat, or lure enemies. But is much too slow for the gibbons. The masters of the canopy. Whether walking on their feet on the tops of the branches or swinging from one branch to another in a form of locomotion known as brachiating. Luckily, there is honey left over from the day before. Bears aren't choosy and will eat a wide variety of foods. Peace is soon restored to the forest canopy. Black bear is active during night time. But what do Asian black bears actually do at night? This is their secret. After a night with a lot of dancing, digging, scratching and stretching, time for a well-deserved nap. The tropical forest is characterized by high rainfall, a minimum of 200 centimeters annually. Around 50% of all biotic species are indigenous to the rainforest. Where there is rain, there are waterfalls. Where there are waterfalls, there are rivers. Where there are rivers, there is life. Big life. Banteng. Wild cattle quenching their thirst in the river. A crocodile pretends it's asleep, just waiting for the next bite. A Sambar deer family, the stag monitoring the young, blocking antlers. The rarely seen and endangered tiger looking for prey. Elephants cooling down their body temperatures. Wild pigs teaching their offspring to cross a river. The Asian wild water buffalo, weighing up to 1,000 kilograms, a ton, like a medium-sized calf, a challenge to any predator. In the darker undergrowth of the rainforest, restricted in many areas by poor penetration of sunlight, another kind of life is found. Small life. Like these shrimps looking for mating grounds. A myriad of insects, ants, larvae, microorganisms, and beetles, many still unnamed and thousands probably undiscovered. This is an alien world on the forest floor.
beautiful butterfly has its price. It's a titbit for the collared falconet. Brutally, it removes the head, eats it, and throws the wings back into the air. Individuals are born, hunted, killed, and eaten in an everlasting cycle of life and death. Dragonflies come in varied colors and shapes. Their bodies often blue, green, or purple. Their wings seem to shimmer as if made of transparent silver. Each of their two eyes are made up of 20 to 25,000 tinier eyes, allowing them to zero in on the flying insects that are their daily meals. The position during mating, known as a wheel formation, is unique to insects. The female may lay up to 100,000 eggs at a time in or near water. After about two weeks, the eggs hatch and an immature dragonfly, a nymph, emerges. Once hatched, the nymph spends its time hunting and eating small fish or even members of its own family. It takes six months to seven years for a dragonfly nymph to mature. When it's ready to metamorphose into an adult, it climbs out of water and up a plant to shed its final nymphal skin. Long before the dinosaurs walked the earth 300 million years ago, dragonflies took to the air. And now, after years in the water, yet another beautiful dragonfly is born. It will feed and mate, and then it will die. The archer fish. By squirting drops of water from its specialized mouth, the fish can knock down insects sitting on overhanging vegetation. They are able to hit their prey at distances of up to about two meters. Bang Mapa Cast Formation, a group of deep limestone caves like a vampire's castle. Home to strange underworld formations and rare, mysterious cave dwellers, like bats searching for evening prey. And the waterfall-climbing cave fish, a sensation and still a mystery. This is the only place in the world where one can get a glimpse of these blind fish with fins almost like feet that allow them to climb up ledges. They have no eyes and their bodies lack all pigmentation. Pink and white, slightly translucent, like ghosts. This is about as close as one can get to aliens on Earth. Another day in the forest canopy. Gibbons live in small monogamous families composed of a mated pair and up to four offspring. They mate for life, unlike most of the great apes. Since they are vulnerable to predators on the forest floor, they spend most of their lives in trees. They drink rainwater from tree holes 
often by dipping a hand into the water and then slurping it up from their fur. There's no breeding season. Gibbons may copulate any day, and the female will come into estrus at any time of the year. Gibbon families form tremendously strong and emotional bonds with each other. A poignant picture of motherhood. Dusky Langer is another canopy dweller. Like gibbons, the Langers spend most of their time in trees. They fear water and will cross no body of it, river, lake, or swamp. Normally, the Dusky Langer gives birth to a single offspring. Very rarely, too, like this female, mother of two babies. A pair of twins waddling and jumping around. Annoying and adorable. When daylight starts to shimmer away, a giant shadow of doom from the underworld fills the sky. Clouds of thousands upon thousands of bats emerge from the caves to feed on small insects. When the night shift begins, Different species take over. A night owl, various tree frogs, a civet, or as it is also called, a toddy cat, a snake, the peninsula pit viper. Forests are home to many kinds of colorful birds. The red-breasted parakeets. A green magpie. Whiskered tree swift. Chinese pond heron and a fish eagle a white-throated kingfisher, blue magpie, plain prinia, superstar of Bung Poropet Lake, the pied kingfisher. This boldly patterned black and white plumaged bird may watch for prey from a perch, as many other kingfisher species do. Then they dive into the water, creating a shower. Appearing with its stabbed prey in its bill. More often, the pied may hover mid-air for up to a minute, taking its time to locate the perfect meal. The 
Pied Kingfisher is the largest bird capable of a true hover. When back on its perch, it tosses the fish into the air, catches it deftly, and makes sure to swallow it head first. Birds have four primary needs. Food, water, shelter, and a place to raise a family. Almost like human beings. Like humans, they also design and build complicated individual constructions, homes for their intended and coming offspring. The black and red broadbill collects material for a bulky, untidy ball nest hanging from the tip of a branch. The hornbill seeks out a suitable cavity in a tree and uses clay and mud to seal it from predators. The Asian open bill stalk builds a rough platform of sticks, often on half submerged trees. The great yellow nape uses its beak to create larger holes for its nests. Bayer weavers are known for their elaborately woven pendulous nests. These are created with a central nesting chamber. The highly complicated construction is made with long strips of paddy leaves, rough grasses and strips torn from palm fronds. The olive-backed sunbird builds a hanging flask-shaped nest with an overhanging porch at the entrance. The outside is often untidy and decorated with dead leaves and seed cases. Unlike the home of its cousin, the Bayer weaver, the nest of the Asian golden weaver is a messy structure. Once constructions are built and the chicks have hatched, a frenzied feeding begins. Endless days and nights finding prey for apparent infinite open and thankless mouths. Feeding the usual range of food, such as invertebrates, small animals and fruit. The blue-bearded bee-eater, nesting in deep tunnels of mud, feeding their chicks, bees and insects. to keep a nest clean. Small ants have swarmed from nowhere, causing itching and discomfort. The female blue-winged pitta calls for a helping hand, or beak. The male helps clean up by removing a sticky substance from the offspring's bottoms. This remote Buddhist temple is home to a group of the largest bats in the world, the flying fox. They camp in big trees. There are hundreds, sometimes even thousands. 
During the day, they hang out by roosting in trees, wings wrapped around their body, squabbling noisily and fanning themselves when hot. Favoured roost sites are used for many years and the trees become stripped of bark and foliage by the bat's sharp claws that help them cling to branches. Flying foxes are social animals, roosting together in the tops of trees, mostly hanging upside down because this is more energy efficient. During the day, they spend hours on personal hygiene, licking and scratching themselves endlessly. It is likely that communal living comes at the cost of living among large numbers of external parasites. The temple camp is a base from which flying foxes make their day and nighttime foraging trips. rain falls, they draw closer together in their camp, using their wings as umbrellas. A flying fox penetrating the sky like a vampire from a gothic novel. This is an underwater tropical forest, the Andaman Sea. Coral reefs, a true natural treasure. One quarter of the world's coral reefs lie in Southeast Asian waters. Each forms a complete ecosystem, the oldest and most productive ecosystems on Earth. Andaman Sea is home to the most diverse collection of marine life in the world. Like this spotless firefish. A black spotted toadfish. The painted flute mouth or trumpet fish, it lives on the sea floor, close to plants or corals for protection and shelter. A jellyfish, one of the most venomous ocean creatures with stings that might kill a human within minutes. But to the smallest fish in the sea, it forms a vibrating, protecting shield against outside predators.
another highly deadly species, the sea crate. The Hawksbill Turtle. While being omnivorous, it feeds on algae, sea anemones, and dangerous jellyfish. But different species of sea sponges are the principal food. At times, the appearance of water species may look weird. Sometimes, just small. Often, extraordinary. Like this octopus. An octopus has eight arms, which trail behind it as it swims. It has three hearts. Two for pumping blood to each of the gills, and a third for pumping blood to the entire body. For defense against predators, it uses color-changing camouflage. Within a second, it adjusts its colors. Green, red, brown. Or even a mixture of colors until the background is matched. The whale shark is a graceful, slow-moving giant and the biggest fish in the world. The largest confirmed individual had a length of approximately 13 meters and a weight of more than 22 tons. Its mouth is large enough to fit a human inside, but luckily it is a harmless filter feeder that eats only plankton and small fish. Above the sea, and not necessarily far away from tourist areas, a variety of seabirds can be seen. The great egret. Wood sandpiper. Black-winged stilts. Grey heron. And a large group of Brahmini kites looking for prey in the salty water. Kites are often scavengers, foraging both over water and land, feeding on dead fish and crabs. But occasionally, they hunt live prey, such as hares or bats. When fishing, they don't dive. Prey on the water surface is snatched with their talons. At the intersection of land and sea, mangrove forests support a wealth of life and may be more important to the health of the planet than we previously realized. Mangroves provide nursery grounds for a wide range of microbes, invertebrates, and crabs. An alien world of remarkable creatures fighting to survive. The mangrove swamp ecosystem feeds fish and shrimps, wading birds, and the long-tailed macaque, or crab.
crab-eating macaque. Although the macaque feeds on crabs, it is also known to eat almost 200 different types of plants and fruits, helping the forest to regenerate and keep its fragile balance. The macaque knows exactly where to look for prey. Sometimes it even cleans off the mud before eating. A youngster seems to have invented its own fitness machine. Another youngster wants to join in. The inevitable fight that follows is quickly resolved by the alpha male. Long-tailed macaques are social animals. They live in groups of 15 to 30 individuals. The female gives birth to only one infant at a time. Their social structure and behavior are almost as complex as humans. Each group, the troop, is made up of a dominant alpha male his harem of female monkeys and their babies. Being strongly territorial, the gibbon family defend its boundaries, warding off fellow gibbons with vigorous visual and vocal displays. A male gibbon competitor has penetrated the alpha male territory in search of food. The alpha male, not only protecting his territory, but also his mate and newborn baby, frightens the intruder, chasing it away from his family's feeding grounds. Meanwhile, a female intruder sees a chance of getting a piece of the cake. Returning from his chase, the alpha male immediately goes after the new intruder. Another predator is climbing the fruitful fig trees, a binturong. Cautiously, the female gibbon tries to lure this Asian bear cat away. It is too big a handful for her, so she leaves this job to her mate. The male gibbon and the bear cat challenge each other's patience. Finally, the gibbon male decides to retreat, out of reach of the bear cat, only to scare away yet another intruder, the great hornbill. Finally, after a busy day, time for some family reunion in the forest canopy. But for some, freedom is a luxury. 
Extinction is widespread and rapidly depleting the rich tapestry and treasures of life on Earth. One hundred and forty thousand species per year are at risk. Once the biodiversity of our planet is lost, it can never be brought back again. As on other continents, Asian wildlife is depleted by illegal hunting and trading. In this marketplace, people have gathered to sell exotic birds, illegally captured in the rainforest, sold for the highest bid, and here, participating in a bird singing competition. underwater octopus, butterflies, gibbons, jacana chicks, and the largest animal on earth, the elephant. These species, and many more, have taken billions of years to form. Hopefully, we will let them stay a little longer in this fragile and remote world. The blue, white and green gem in the solar system. Our planet, our one and only home, the Earth. <laughs>